Item, SCP-1330. Code name, Universal Dumping Grounds. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Research Site 64 was constructed in the guise of a waste treatment plant in order to study and contain SCP-1330. SCP-1330 is to be combed daily for new instances of SCP-1330-1, which are to be transferred to the Research Site 64's indoor sorting chamber. Instances deemed to be of interest are to be categorized and stored in the appropriate chamber, while all other instances are to be tagged and returned to SCP-1330. Task Force C-14, Lord Admiral's Men, is to be permanently stationed at Research Site 64 in order to prevent access to it by unauthorized persons. Description, SCP-1330 is a landfill, located at SCP-1330's anomalous nature stems from the origin of the bulk of its contents an estimate of 65% of the refuse found in it originates from various extra-dimensional sources, as the nature of the items found in SCP-1330 and additional tests confirmed. SCP-1330 appears to be connected to, or possibly occupy, at least 27. 27 different extra-dimensional points, with refuse, henceforth SCP-1330-1, traveling between them at random. SCP-1330 is therefore in a constant state of change, with new instances of SCP-1330-1 replacing old ones. SCP-1330 appears to only affect items discarded as being worthless, though how an item is determined to be considered worthless is uncertain. Due to this, no item placed in SCP-1330 with the intention of transferring it to an extra-dimensional point will be affected by it. Attempts to bypass SCP-1330's item restriction have been unsuccessful thus far. See testing log. SCP-1330 first came to the Foundation's attention after interception of a local television network's news piece about a large number of homeless living in a landfill. The residents of the landfill were convinced it was visited by aliens, and showed various unusual items they found in it as proof. One of these items bore marks similar to those seen on SCP. Foundation personnel closed down SCP-1330 to incoming traffic, removed the interlopers dwelling in it and secured a perimeter around SCP-1330. Addendum SCP-1330-A, on comma the following items were recovered from SCP-1330. Recovery Log. 3. 3. Empty Glass Jars. Murray's Marvelous Marmite. Label claims the product was manufactured in New Kensington, Virginia. No such brand or city are known to exist. 1. 1. Grey t-shirt. Four-sleeved, with numerous sweat stains and holes. 2. 2. Glass eggs. Cracked and chipped, and filled with an unidentified substance. Transferred to indoor facility for examination. 1. One animal carcass belonging to an unknown species of feline. The specimen bears a close resemblance to a Maturodontini, saber-toothed tiger, though its stature is identical to that of a normal house cat. 8. 8. Pamphlets for a bake sale organized by the Unified Western Manichaean Church of the Town of Gamaliel, East Jersey, taking place on the 19th of October, 2003. The Manichaean religion is largely considered to be extinct since the early 14th century and the province of East Jersey was disestablished in 1702. 1. One newspaper. Agora Gazette. Ancient Greek. Newspaper has food stains and cigarette burns, and features colored photographs and descriptions of modern technology. 1. 1. Non-functioning cell phone and earpiece. Made by the Dane Corporation. A corporation that went bankrupt in the late 1970s and produced only farming and construction equipment. Microchip and battery technology found in the device appears to be decades ahead of the foundation's current capabilities. Despite this, 
The device lacks features common in commercial cell phones such as a camera or a radio. 1. 1. Photo album. Fondest memories. Belonging to the family. The front cover of the album has several boot prints on it. One section of the album commemorates a family vacation to Mars, evidently taking place during the summer of 1992. Examination of the photos suggests Mars to have undergone an extensive terraforming effort. In many of the photos, the face of the family's mother has been either cut out, or scribbled over with black marker. A broken toilet bowl containing 800 grams of polished gem quality diamonds. Nine copies of Presidential Perversions, an erotic novel describing the adventures of Dick Studley, the 69th president of the uninhibited sexings of America. The print in the books is badly misaligned, the covers have been stripped off, and the books have been marked with a rejected stamp. Of note is that President Studley's sexual partners are of five distinct genders. 4. 4. Empty soda cans. Conquer a worm energy drink. According to the packaging, the drink contains water, 70%, sugar, 10%, arsenic, 5%, enriched uranium, 5%, blood of virgin, 9%, and artificial coloring and flavors. Drink manufactured in Golgotha, Ohio. No such town is known to exist. Addendum SCP-1330-B. The following attempts to bypass SCP-1330's item restrictions have been made. Test log. Test 1330-A. Item. A $20 bill. Previously in the possession of Dr. Test. Test item was tagged and placed in SCP-1330 by Dr. Dart. Several control items, already within SCP-1330, were chosen to be observed. Result. Following two, two, weeks of observation, it has been concluded that test item failed to be affected by SCP-1330. Control items all disappeared and were replaced by different items in a period of no more than one, one, week. Test 1330B. Item. An empty cigarette pack. Previously in the possession of Dr. Dart. Test. Similar to test 1330A, but test item was not tagged and instead only observed remotely. Result. Test item failed to be affected by SCP-1330. Test 1330C. Item. The core of an apple. Previously in the possession of Dr. Dart. Test. Similar to test 1330B, but the test item was placed in SCP-1330 by an agent unaware of its properties. Result. Test item failed to be affected by SCP-1330. It appears SCP-1330 is able to detect the original intention behind attempts to use it. Test 1330-D. Item. A used tissue. Previously in the possession of D-1330-1312. Test. D-1330-1312. Previously aware of SCP-1330 properties due to his work in sorting instances of SCP-1330-1, was given Class B amnestics and ordered to place test item in SCP-1330, now unaware of its properties. Result. Test item failed to be affected by SCP-1330. It is hypothesized SCP-1330 is capable of sensing not only the intent of the owner of the item placed in it, but the intent of anyone involved in the process of placing an item. Recommending further examination of this capability. Test 1330E. Item. An empty tin can. Test. Agent. Unaware of SCP-1330's properties, was asked to collect a piece of refuse and send it to Doctor. Also unaware of them. In Site 19. Doctor was then asked to send the test item to Agent in Research Site 64. 
who arrived there only for the purpose of this test and was not made aware of SCP-1330's properties. Agent was requested to give the test item to D-1330-1356, another new arrival. D-1330-1356 placed test item in SCP-1330. Result. Item failed to be affected by SCP-1330. Apparently SCP-1330 can sense the intention of using it to transfer an item even when no one in the process of producing, delivering or placing the item is aware of it. Test 1330F. Item. Undisclosed for the purpose of the test. Test. A level 0 sanitary personnel on site was asked to collect a piece of refuse and send it to another level 0 personnel working on a different site. Said personnel was requested to do the same, until the item passed through 43, 43 different level 0 personnel. Test item was then collected by an agent unfamiliar with SCP-1330, delivered to research site 64, and placed in SCP-1330 by a different agent, who was also unaware of SCP-1330's properties. A camera was installed next to the test item, and, number 27, 27, in the chain, was asked to observe a live video feed of it daily and report any alterations in its state, in the guise of a psychological examination. At no point were any personnel aware of SCP-1330's properties allowed to know the nature of the test item selected, nor to observe the video feed. Result. Test item was observed by for a period of two months. Three times a day reported no change in the test item's state. Due to its nature, it is likely that SCP-1330 cannot be used as a means to deliberately introduce harmful elements to our dimension from a remote point. However, accidental introduction is still possible. Due to this, discovering a way to purposely harness SCP-1330 in order to eliminate possible threats is of the highest priority. Attempts to bypass SCP-1330's resistance are to continue until a solution is found.